Here we go again. What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And my channel is PC Tech Games and Gear. And yes, this is a RTX 2070 rant. Basically, I promise we're gonna have more videos than speculation, which I feel like that's all I've been doing lately. But I wanted to share my opinion on this and I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant, but stay with me. I also have a lot of non-ranty, non-speculative videos coming out right around the corner. I'm doing an overclock video on this monitor for 4K. I'm also gonna be releasing the gaming budget upgrade builds, things like that. So make sure you stay subscribed because those videos are coming down the pipeline, but let's talk about today's topic. So Nvidia dropped that the RTX 2070 is going to be coming out on October 17th. Pre-orders should be starting for this obviously sometime soon. Now the RTX 2070 is different from its 2080 and 2080 Ti counterpart, and it's a GPU I might actually recommend you buy right now if you can find it for cost. And that I'll probably disqualify it uh, because they say it's gonna be uh, $499, but we all know that you're not gonna be able to find it for that cost. But let's kind of go through the motions with this. So the 2080 Ti we know performs 30-ish percent better than a 1080 Ti and a um, basically 2080 as they currently stand. Now the 2080 and the 1080 Ti, even though they have different specs, meet kind of head-to-head -head in overall performance. Some games favor the 2080, some uh, games favor the 1080 Ti, depending on basically memory restrictions seem to be the biggest difference. Here's what's very interesting about this. The 2080 has 600 less CUDA cores than a 1080 Ti. It also has three gigabytes of less memory, even though the memory is running faster and it's the a GDDR6, so there's more bandwidth, so that's where the performance is kind of made up. The 2070, which is competing again directly against the 1080, has only 200 less CUDA cores, and it has the exact same amount of memory, but the memory is GDDR6, and there is more bandwidth. So I actually expect that the performance out of the 2070 is gonna be significantly better than the 1080, probably somewhere to the tune, again, speculation, but I'm also deducing based off of the information we have with current cards, somewhere in the 20% range is what I'm gonna basically put out there. If this scenario is true, what we have to kind of take into consideration is that Nvidia may be pulling a money grab. Now, let me be very clear. Everyone's been bagging on Nvidia recently. I actually, of course, love their company. I've bought their products for years. I actually blame the lack of competition more than anything else on the current pricing. And AMD is uh, obviously needing to bring kind of their A game, but even with Navi coming out next year and a couple of the things, you know, the performance, whether well, it's, I mean, they can't even meet the top end performance right now. So we'll have to see if they have anything to kind of come out in the future. That aside, what uh, kind of NVIDIA has done with the RTX 2070 is a little bit greedy, at least in my opinion. With the NVLink technology, we know that you can basically get anywhere from 90 to 100% scaling on GPUs, which is what it's always should have been, but we haven't had the bandwidth, now we do. If the 2070 performs 20% faster than 1080, it would put it within five to 10% of an RTX 2080 or a 1080 Ti. What that means is that if you could use the NVLink technology on it, you could get about 40%-ish better um, performance, and that would place it about five to 10% over an RTX 2080 Ti for $200 less than the current model. So you can see from Nvidia's perspective why it would not be in their best interest to basically enable that. And there might be the argue that, well, you couldn't fit it on the PCB, or maybe there's other, you know, other factors into the construction of the GPU that disallowed for that, but I call BS. Honestly, I mean, the 1070 had SLI support, the 1080, which is in the same bulb, like those are all in the same roundhouse as the 2070 all have it enabled. Nvidia obviously didn't enable it on their, um, you know, their 1060 or um, the 1050 or 1050 Ti or any of those cards. Um, and AMD did the same thing with theirs. So, I mean, with the 560 and 550, you couldn't do any crossfire. So I mean, it, you know, there's guilt across the board for that. And obviously, there's also engineering restrictions. But the point I'm trying to make, Nvidia could have very easily allowed the 2070 to be a great option for people who wanted to spend maybe $500 again, if you can find it for a great GPU or you know a great performing GPU where you still have access to ray tracing technology and DLSSS in the future if you're banking on that and allow you to upgrade by buying a second GPU down the line for potentially better performance than a 2080 Ti but they didn't and so my thought is that that's a purpose decision whether it is or not you know you can argue that out with me I'd love to hear your feedback but for the RTX 2070 coming out it's going to be very interesting because for the cost if it does perform as well as I think it might, you might be able to uh, basically overclock this GPU and get almost as good a performance as a 1080 Ti or as a 2080. And if that's the case, then that means that it might be the best value GPU in the bunch for the cost, even if you're paying $600 
just depends. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Really quickly, thanks to my patrons. I'm doing something special for you guys. Um, if you make sure you check your email, I've already messaged all of you. But thank you to you uh, patrons who give me your actual real money to support my channel. It makes a huge difference. Um, thanks to everyone who's a Twitch subscriber and joining me on the weekends when I stream. It's a lot of fun. If you're a Twitch or patron, I put your name at the end of my videos as a way to say thanks. If you want to buy any PC hardware, make sure you use my Amazon affiliate link. It's in the description. You have to scroll down a little bit um, to find it, but that supports me directly. If you're going to buy something, you're already going to buy. You know, use my um, use my affiliate link, and basically that supports the channel, or at least helps me um, support the channel financially because I am self-funded. Um, and now remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon. YouTube's algorithm sucks, as we all know. And um, as always, guys, thank you for watching this video. But you know what? I'm going to make them, whether you watch or not, because I love to do it. And I hope to see all of you next time here on Gear Inc.